I'm starting a brand new garden from scratch in an area that currently has nothing but clay soil and a bunch of weeds. So the very first thing and the most important thing to do is to amend my soil with the proper nutrients. But the only real way to know exactly what I need to add to my soil is to figure out what's in my soil already. So there's a few different ways I can do that. I can take a soil sample, send it off to a lab and get a soil analysis, or I could use a home test kit. But there's so many different options for home test kits out there. How do I know which one is even gonna work? I'm Kyle from Urban Farmstead, and today I'm gonna to be taking soil samples, sending them off to the lab, testing out a few different soil sample test kits, and then figuring out what I need to add to my soil. I'll start by digging a small hole, about six inches deep. Then I'll take my sample by skimming the edge of that hole so I can get a little bit of each layer. I've got about three cups of soil here, which is plenty for all three of these tests. So let's go see what's in it. Snack time. All right, back to work. Come on, buddy. I'm using a shovel to spread this out because I want to avoid touching the soil with my hands too much. I'll just pick out any big sticks and rocks. And I don't see very many in this sample. Now I'll leave it here in the shade to dry for a couple of hours. It doesn't need to be completely dry, but it shouldn't be too wet. All right, the soil's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna start. And I think I'm gonna start with this mail-in soil analysis because all I have to do is fill up this bag and mail it in, and it's gonna take a while. So I filled everything out. Now I just need to fill up the bag to where it says, fill to this line. The hardest part is gonna be getting this big bag of soil into this little envelope. All right, I'm gonna go send this off and then I'll do the other ones. All right, now onto my home test kits. I'm gonna be testing the Rapid Test Kit and the Lamotte Garden Soil Test Kit. And I'll be following the directions on both of these kits exactly, but rather than making you wait through 30 minutes of that, I'll be cutting through and just showing you the general process. But it's important that if you get either of these kits or any other soil test kit, follow the instructions exactly as they're given in order to get the most accurate results. All right, I'm gonna start with this rapid test kit. And this was by far the easiest to find and most affordable kit. This was only a few bucks at my local nursery. And it says it's gonna test my pH, my nitrogen, my phosphorus, and my potassium. We'll see. Let's get it opened up. It's a good idea to wear gloves anytime you're doing these soil tests. For one thing, I don't know what chemicals are in these. If you're a scientist, you might know what they're using, but I don't know what they are, so I don't want them on my hands. And second, I don't want to contaminate the soil that I'm going to be testing with something that's on my hands. So just wear some gloves. So there's one section here for a pH test and a separate section for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The pH test, I'll need these green capsules. I'm just taking a little bit of soil. Even though I mix this up, I'm taking soil from different sections of this pile. Okay. Now we're at the first line, then open the green capsule and empty the contents of the green capsule into the tube. Soil at the first line, capsules in there, now water to the fourth line. So now it says cap the tube and shake thoroughly. Okay, now I just allow the soil to settle and the color to develop for about one minute. Go. All right, it's been at least a minute. Now I just compare the color of this solution to my color chart. And the best way to do that is to hold it up to the light. And to me, it looks like it's right between acidic and neutral, which is actually exactly where I want it. For my soil, I prefer it to be somewhere around 6.5. The soil that I've got in the water looks like it has a little bit of a green tone to it, which would put it a little bit closer to neutral as well. So I'd say somewhere in the low sixes, not exactly 6.0, probably somewhere around 6.2, if that was showing on the chart. 
uh, which is pretty good range for me for growing vegetables. Let's move on to the other three macronutrients. In a clear jar, put one part soil to five parts water, shake well and let sit for 30 minutes to 24 hours. I gotta go get a jar. All right, I've got my glass jar. Now it says one part soil to five parts water. Yeah. Three, four, five. All right, so now I will shake this vigorously for about a minute. All right, well mixed. Now I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes to 24 hours. I'll probably let this sit for about an hour. Let's put this somewhere where it won't get, that's good. All right, here's our soil sample. I waited about an hour and a half. It is still cloudy, it said that's okay. It'll just be a little bit harder to read the results. Hi, I'm Kyle from the future. It's 24 hours later and this water still looks just as murky as it did yesterday. So I'm really glad I didn't wait. By the way, if I look a lot more dirty than I did yesterday, it's because today I am prepping that soil according to what I learned from all of these soil tests. So stay tuned for that video coming soon, probably about a week or so. Bye. So now I've got my nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and all three of these tests with this kit are done exactly the same. I'm gonna fill each tube to the fourth line with this liquid. Now I'll just open up each of these capsules, empty the contents into the vial, cap and shake. All right, those are well agitated. Now I'll just leave these to sit and settle for 10 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Time to use this color chart to see where we're at with these samples. The first one, nitrogen. Now this barely changed color at all. It looks almost clear, so I'm gonna call that very low with the nitrogen. Phosphorus also is Pretty clear, it's definitely got more color than the nitrogen, but I'm still gonna put that in the either low to very low. And then the potassium, that one didn't clear at all, it's still really cloudy. But based on the color here, I would say that's high in potassium. It almost exactly matches the high mark. So high potassium, low phosphorus, low nitrogen, according to the rapid test kit. All right, Lamont, this is the test I'm really excited about. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, all right, we've got a few different solutions. And all these fancy, sciencey gadgets and more solutions. And then a bunch of pamphlets all kinds of instructions, I think. Wow. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Some caps, some tablets, some little droppers. This kid has a lot of stuff. And actually it wasn't that expensive. All right, so this test kit comes with a lot of great stuff, including a lot of great information on not only how to do the test, but what the results mean and even what to do with your soil once you have your results, depending on what crop you wanna grow and the results that I get from this test, it tells me exactly what I should be adding to my soil and at what amounts in order to grow certain things like tomatoes and broccoli and really all sorts of different things. Also, in reading through this guide, there was really good information in soil testing and I learned that using a strainer or a window screen or a sifter or something like that to break up the clumps in your soil and kind of strain it through to make a more fine soil sample, I'll get better results. So I went back to the kitchen, I grabbed this strainer, and it's looking good. So I'll start with the pH test like I did with the other kit, and it says to fill with a pH indicator solution to line four. These little vials actually have the numbers written on them, so you don't have to count the lines. That's kind of nice. Add three measurements to the sample. One, two, and three. 
cap it and mix gently for one minute. Gently this time for some reason. All right, it's been about a minute. Now I just let this stand for 10 minutes and then I'll read the chart. All right, it's been 10 minutes and my pH test is complete. And that's looking almost exactly like 7.0. As I hold it up to the light, it still looks like pretty much blue with maybe a little bit of green. So maybe like a 6.8 based on this chart, which would mean that it's slightly acidic. So I'll write that down and we'll move on to the next test. All right, now for the phosphorus test. I'll take another tube again. This time I'm using the phosphorus extracting solution. Taking three scoops again, adding it to that solution. And once again, mixing gently. All right, so I'll let that sit until the liquid above the soil is clear. It's actually clearing up really quickly. I'm gonna use this little pipette to get the clear liquid out of here. I'll fill this new clean tube to line three. Now I'll add six drops of this phosphorus indicator. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cap, shake that one again. And I'll add one phosphorus test tab. Cap and shake again. And then once this capsule dissolves, I'll compare it to the chart. There should be some shade of blue. All right, the capsule is dissolved and it's blue. So according to this chart, to me, looks like we're somewhere in the medium low range. To be honest, this chart doesn't show a lot of color variance between those two, but I would say that the color of blue is somewhere between the medium to low range Definitely not high, definitely not trace. So I'd say there's certainly some phosphorus in the soil. All right, now for the nitrogen test. For this one, I'll take my nitrogen extracting solution and I'll fill this tube to line seven. Then I'll add two scoops of soil. Cap and shake this up. All right, as with the last test, I will allow the soil to settle, the liquid to clear, and I'll be taking a sample of that liquid once it's clear. All right, this liquid looks pretty clear, and I'll fill this to line three once again. I'll take 2.5 gram scoops of this nitrogen indicator. I'll add these to the vial. I'll cap this, shake it gently. All right, now I'll just wait five minutes for that to turn pink. All right, I think it's been five minutes and this sample definitely turned pink. So let's compare it to the chart and see just how much nitrogen is in the soil. To me, that looks like somewhere around low, maybe even between low and trace amounts. So not a whole lot of nitrogen, but there's certainly nitrogen in there. All right, potassium test. Let's see how many bananas are in this soil. Potassium solution, line seven, four scoops. I'm getting real good at this. Shake vigorously for a minute, then remove the cap and allow it to settle once again. All right, the soil has settled, and so I'm gonna fill this one to line five. Uh-oh, guess we'll do that again. <laughs> oh boy, that's fun. All right, let's do this again. I think this time I'm actually gonna put it in this container so I don't knock it over. Probably should have been doing that this whole time. All right, that's not going anywhere. I'll add one of these little banana pills. Shake that up till it dissolves and turns purple. The instructions say specifically that this should turn purple-ish. 
Now, I'm not a scientist, but I feel like ish is not a common thing in the science world, but purple-ish, yeah, why not? Now, I add two drops at a time of this potassium testing solution until it turns blue, ish. I'll count the drops, and the amount of drops that I add to this to turn it from purplish to bluish will be my determining factor in exactly how much potassium is in my soil. One, two. Thirteen, fourteen. All right, right about there at 14, it's looking pretty blue to me. Let's see what the chart says. Yeah, I'd say we're right about there in the blue range after 14, which says I've got medium amount of potassium in my soil. All right, that's it for my home test kits. Now I just have to get my soil analysis back from the lab. Oh, there it is. All right, that was quick. All right, I'm really excited to see what this is going to say. All right, so the first part talks about my soil pH, and it says that my soil is moderately acidic, which is pretty much what I found from both of those kits. It says my pH here is 6.36, which is almost exactly between the two test kits. Now, those were both based on color guides, so they weren't completely accurate. I'm guessing a little bit on those charts, but I'd say this is consistent with what I've been finding on my other two kits as far as pH. So now let's check out the macronutrients, that NPK that we tested with the other kits. Right here it lists the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and all of the ranges for them. So my nitrogen is at 12 parts per million, which is showing as low. Not very low, but low. The rapid test kit said it was very low. The Lamont test kit said it was low, just like this. My phosphorus is showing it at the upper end of the low range which is pretty much where the Lamont test kit showed, whereas the rapid test kit showed it as also very low. And then the potassium is showing way up here on the upper end of adequate. So the rapid test kit showed it as very high. The Lamont test kit showed it as medium. This one's showing it as adequate, which I would also consider medium. So based on this, I have to assume that this soil analysis from the lab is gonna be my most accurate test. The Lamont test kit was very, very close to this. So I would say that Lamont test is pretty darn accurate. The rapid test kit was accurate as far as the pH, and it wasn't completely off with the other one. It just said that my potassium was higher than it actually is. And it said that my nitrogen and my phosphorus were lower than they actually are. My potassium is high, my nitrogen and phosphorus are low, so it was correct in that, but it was just not accurate in that. So this is a really good test. Not only does it show accurate numbers for all of those, but it also shows all of my micronutrient levels. And based on what I'm growing, it recommends what I should be adding to my soil per thousand square feet. So when I sent this into the lab, I can say I'm growing a single crop like tomatoes. I can say I'm growing mixed crop. Maybe I'm growing trees, fruit trees, or lawn, whatever I'm growing, I tell the lab what I want to grow, what I want my yields to be, what they have been, and they take that soil test. They determine based on what my numbers come back as, what I need to add to my soil in order to get the yields that I want from the crop that I'm growing. So this is a really good test. It's expensive and it's one test. Those are the only two downsides to it, really. Expensive, one test, and it's not instant. It took about a week and a half to get this back, even though it seemed pretty instant today. So, this is a great test. I'm probably not gonna do it again, though, unless I have a significant issue. The rapid test kit, this was an okay test. I will probably not do this test ever again because it's also sort of a one-time test. You buy the kit, you've got the tablets, you use it, you see what you've got. Not completely accurate, but not completely inaccurate. And then the Lamont test kit. This kit, this one was very accurate, very close to the soil analysis that I sent into the professionals in the lab. And I've got enough chemicals and test strips and tablets and banana pills in this kit to test my soil like 20 times and I'm going to. 
I'm gonna amend the soil. I'm gonna test it again with this kit, see where it's at. I'll test it at the end of the season, see what I need to add at the end of the season in fall, and we'll go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed looking at all these different kits with me and seeing how they work and seeing which one worked the best for me. I know everybody who tries these kits is gonna have a little bit different results, but I'm glad I could share with you what my results were from these kits and definitely recommend this Lamont kit. Again, this video is not sponsored by any of these companies, any of these kits. I bought these all myself, I paid for it all myself, and I want you all to have the most accurate information, at least from my experience, so that maybe you can have a better experience with your garden. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe, and otherwise, I'll see you all next time. <music>